Okay, hello again. This is uh, CKM doing another part on my kind of tutorial let's play strike thingy job for uh, Ireland. Um, had a break for a few days from doing it, but uh, we'll carry on a bit more, see, see how it goes. There's been a, a patch 1.04 has been issued since the last one. Um, it's changed a few things. Uh, we might mention one or two of them as we go along. Doesn't really change big the big game mechanics that we've, we've discussed so far. Um, but where we were last from last time, if you remember, we started off with Dublin. We in inherited Leinster when our dad kicked the bucket. We then created the title Duke of Meath by because of a, a, a claim on the on the uh, on that touchy. We were then able to enforce a claim on the. Uh, on the county of Kildare. Just a bit of confusion, I think, in one of the uh, comments that someone had written, uh, which I appreciate. Um, I get when you when you are enforcing a de jure claim, or let's 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 go back to basics. If you fabricate a claim, as we've got our blokey there doing him up here, when you if you then get that and then you go to war for it, you yourself will then if you win the war be the Earl of that county and that's because you're claiming to be the rightful Earl of that county whereas when you're pushing a de jure claim so let's look at Leinster because this is one um, which will come up here's the Duchy of Leinster de jure Duchy of Leinster we can create that at the moment uh, and it's based on Leinster and oh sorry oh so sorry oh sorry <laughs> please don't apologize oh so sorry um, what you're actually doing, I think, when you when you if you decide to create that, you know you'll then get this de jure claim on this second county. However, if you then press it, as we saw with Kildare, what will happen is if you win, the current person, him, will simply become your vassal. Uh, therefore, uh, and that's right because what you're actually doing is you're pushing a ducal claim. You're basically saying I'm pushing a claim as the Duke. I'm not saying I own your county, I'm saying I'm the Duke of these two counties, you've got to recognise me as your Duke. In other words, what you're pushing is for this guy to become your vassal. Uh, and if you actually have a look, you can, instead of even doing all that, you can just op try and get this bloke to be your vassal there. And if you see, he'll say no, and you look at why, he'll say power, well that doesn't, that's not a big thing, but he'll go, not my de jure liege, uh, plus there's only a small difference in rank, because he's in a lot of nine with Duke, blah blah blah, but not my de jure league. You can see league is one of the big things. The moment you become the Duke of Leinster, then you become his de jure league. In which case, that is what you're fighting for, really. But the point is, if you get his opinion of you really high, sometimes you you can get him to just become your vassal straight away without even having to fight. But that was one of the th one of the things that I think I wasn't clear on, well, probably because I wasn't actually clear about it myself, but if you're going to do this de jure stuff, uh, you're going to you're not going to inherit straight straight away yourself. You're going to inherit a new vassal. But given that you're trying to conquer the whole island, that's okay. And and as we saw with Kildare, if you really want, you can then take that title off them by uh, trying to revoke it uh, and getting a rebellion. Um, but bear in mind also that at some point we've only got five domain size here that we can have. So you're not going to be able to have all of these counties yourself anyway. So at some point you're going to have to accept that once you declare war, uh, the the winner, when you win, it's not going to be you that holds the direct thing. It's going to be the, the, uh, the vassal. To that end, let's have a look at where we were. We did have this stuff here about unmarried heirs and rural unmarried heirs. We left this last time. Let's just get his stewardship numbers up. The only reason I want to get him married, really, is I don't. He doesn't need to have more kids. He's got them. He's getting on a bit. So I just want to get his stewardship number up because we get a bit more income uh, because of that. You know, again, we come back to that thing there. We're getting a bonus of plus thirty percent because of stewardship. The stewardship is made up of his numbers, the steward's numbers plus half his wife. We don't have a wife, so we need to get that up. I'm being a bit stupid and a bit short-sighted here I'm just gonna marry the top one here which is her so I'm just gonna go yeah marry her uh, the other thing we've got the unmarried heir but that's because his wife died and he's got two kids so I'm gonna leave that alone for the moment um, 
because you can end up having if he has if he marries again and then has more kids, you might find that that his new wife starts causing problems because she wants to try and get rid of these two. Blah blah blah. So we'll leave that for a bit. There's also two kids lacking a guardian, I think, because they've just hit age, or I can't remember if their guardian had died. But either way, this is our grandson. If we go back to our heir, sorry about the flicking. Come on, you bastard. Go back to our heir. This is our grandson, so yeah, I want to educate him, because I want to pick his, he's going to be next in line bar one, so let's educate him. The other one, who is our half-brother, less bothered about him, but we'll use him instead. We'll pick someone with decent traits, but particularly uh, someone who's a bishop, because they get an extra 20% 20 income when you do that, because you've, you're trusting them uh, to do that. So. That's kind of where we are at the moment. Uh, if we unfreeze, uh, move it forward slightly. Uh, there's also this thing called unlanded sons. Because we've got three sons of age and we haven't given them any land, you get a prestige penalty. I'm not entirely sure the rationale for that. Uh, but for the moment, given we have a lot of prestige, I'm not too bothered. But we will look into that. So where we were last time is what are we going to do? And we were looking at, I think we were looking at this. We were looking at, well, we've got the county of Leinster. Click that shut. Uh, the du jour, uh, the du jour duchy. There you go. We've uh, they've got married now. Sorry, let's go back. Uh, so you can see the stewardship number's gone from 30 to 42. So that's that's basically the only reason we've done that. So um, let's go back here then. So Leinster. Click on the county, then we've got du jour. So click on this du jour duchy. We know we can create it, we've got enough gold, we've got enough prestige. But we had an issue because this geezer has an alliance with the King of England. And this screen gives you some very useful information. A lot of the time with alliances, uh, if he calls on, if we attack him, so we create ourselves the Duke of Leinster and then press our du jour claim, he might call his ally in. So a lot of the time, the big thing would for the King of England to decide whether he's going to honour the alliance is how much he likes him, Domhnall, versus how much he likes us. Well, he likes us 17, but if you click over the top, and again, I think they could have made this clearer by probably having two columns, but anyway, that 17 is actually what he thinks of us. Just ignore that up there. Um, but if you click over, you get what the King of England thinks of him there, and he thinks much more highly of him. And that's because he's honoured his alliance already and I think we saw in a previous video we saw some of his troops go wandering off up there and across there that's because they he called them in and they honoured it um, so we have an issue because it's I think it's likely that the King of England would probably honour that alliance so when we attack him we'll suddenly find a big stack of English troops come over and annihilate us so what to do um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a slightly longer game and that is we're going to take our Chancellor, and we're going to go to get him away from fabricating claims for a minute, and then we're going to get him to improve diplomatic relations in Middlesex, which is where the King of England is. And we're going to see if he can up uh, our relationship so that we end up with a high. He ends up with a higher opinion of us than he does currently of of old soppy bollocks there. So uh, that's kind of a longer game, um, and we'll uh, keep an eye on it. One other thing while we're here. I want to keep an eye on what's happening with him because we do care. We care if he gets overthrown, if he has loads of other wars. And now this is one of the things that was there previously but has been enhanced slightly in the patch, which is if you right click you get these things that you've seen before, diplomacy or go to the character, which is up there, right? But if you right click again, if you now this is hidden away, found this on the forums, it doesn't say it anywhere else from what I can tell. Right click on that again and you get these more menus. Go to his location, which is Middlesex which we know. Uh, uh, go to his character relations, which I'm not entirely sure how that kind of works there, because that still seems to be the world and his wife. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway. But the last one, which we care about more, is mark him with special interest. You click that, and he appears up here. And now what you're going to find, I don't know if you remember last time on the message log, they've added this thing now. If you right click a message, you've got this thing here. It says that you get in, you get messages up here for the special interest character. So, 
the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm, I'm caring about what's going on with this guy now. So, you know, if he gets overthrown, that matters to me. Because his heir won't have such a high opinion of this bloke. Uh, possibly. So, that's just one of the extra things that has come in. I haven't really used it that much, but this is a time to use it. for. So, that's one of the things the patch came in. So, anyway, this is uh, one of those things where, because we're this guy's guardian, uh, we can have an effect on the traits. Um... So he's gained the trait Craven because he's uh, he doesn't like spiders, bless. Uh, but we don't want him to have Craven, so let's take him fears in the mind of the killer. There you go, he loses it. There was a 25% chance he got brave, but uh, that didn't happen. So uh, that was all we were going to do there. So anyway, let's continue. We're not going to do. Uh, we're not going to do that yet, then, until we get some benefit to this guy here. Uh, the other thing I should have just noticed from our very useful little side thing here is that our spy master is idle, which is a cardinal sin. So let's just get him to um, uncover plots at the moment, just to make sure nothing's going on. Uh, so that was our uh, wife arriving in court. Uh, and she wants to become spy master. She can fuck off. Um, so anyway, what are we going to do now? Well, we're not. Fa we haven't got any claims, as you can see down here, because we've not managed to fabricate them, and we've had to divert our guy over there. So uh, the next thing to do before we fast forward is to see whether there's any claims that we can press for someone else. And again, you just you're going to do this. There's loads of ways, I guess, you can do this, but you just click on the thing and look for claimants. And you're looking for a little arrow or a little uh, a sort of thumbs up that they will come. You can actually try and bribe them by giving them some cash, and that might that might change. But for now, for now, these these three have claims on this county of Tyra Connell, and none of them seem to want to come. So if we go over to the next one, see if we got any of them There's claimants there. They're probably going to be the same people because it looks like they're let's have a look at what this guy has actually got a claim on. So he's got Why does that come up? Oh yeah, that's right, sorry. Bit of block. Yeah, sorry, there's loads more there, but they're all thumbs down. We're just gonna have a quick scoot through all of these. Yeah, Evolster, there's no claimants there at the moment. Oriel, there's no claimants, Connaught uh, there's no claimants. Brefin, probably not how you say it, there's no claimants. This is a duchy, so I don't want to fight them yet. Desmond, there's a claimant. Oh, and there's a thumb. I said, I'm making it sound surprised, but <laughs> I already knew that, to be honest. Now, this is the uh, ongoing saga of what this means. The bottom line with this is uh, you, get him, you get him over to your court. So you click on him and you say you want to invite him. And why would you want to invite him? Because the current Earl, which must be the guy who's there, uh, won't press his claim. And that's why he's going to come over, right? Uh, so, even though he likes his, his bloke more than he likes us. So anyway, we're going to um, invite him over. Now, what, what will happen? What should happen is, when you press his claim, firstly... You're going to go to war. It's going to give you the your reason for being able to go to war. So let's send it as yes. Okay, he's currently considering it. At the moment, if we go to Desmond up here and click on declare war, you can see we can't because we don't have a cast spell eye to declare war. However, when our bloke shows up, we will have a cast spell eye. Uh, but first things first, let's just check his allies. He hasn't got any. He's on his own. Bless him. Uh, the opinions of that his opinion, opinions of his vassals are not very high, so you won't have much of an army. Anyway, to the heroic Duke Merchard, he's now come over to our court, and we're now his liege. Um, and there is his claim on the county of Desmond. So if we go to Desmond now, or well now we can declare war for the claim on Desmond. Right. The bottom line here is, this guy is going to get this county. All right, when we claim it, because. He's not going to come over with his claim, let us press it, go to war for him, and then just let us, let us waltz off with the county. However, because we're a duke, and he has, he'll be an earl, he should become our vassal, in the much way, same way that this Kildare bloke did. 
uh, in other words, we'll control another county. It won't be part of our domain itself because you know he'll own it. But again, it's all part of uh, the control that we need to unite Ireland. And of course, we can then, once we've done that, we can then revoke the title off him if we want another war. So anyway, let's go ahead and claim Desmond uh, against this guy here and see what happens. We've now declared war. Let's go straight up here and raise our own armies. We're not going to raise the vassal armies yet. Um, we've also got some people who have arrived. Is that because at court? It's always worth when you get these just... Uh, I don't know if she was just a war... Oh yeah, he brought his wife with, her, with him. Bless her. Is that... Oh! who's actually a star diplomat, but unfortunately we can't use her because she's a bird. You can't have, well, you can't have birds in that sort of work, can you? Should be at home, in the kitchen. So, anyway, uh, we've, as ever, oh, Christ. Oh, by the way, uh, meanwhile our chaplain is going around increasing the opinion of our bishops, which is good, because we want to get more money. Oh, and, oh, and he's been busy. <laughs> he's both <laughs> he's, this guy is bizarre, isn't he? Really, he managed to in. He's got his relations up and down at the same time. He seems to have improved relations plus twenty-five, and then insulted him. So anyway, we're going to take our geezer over to this geezer here and see if we can have a fight, 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 fight. Go over there. Uh, while we're doing that, we'll merge his army, and we'll make sure it's sort of vaguely balanced, which it kind of is ish. So anyway, we're going to see what happens over there. We've got some stuff here. I think he's the one who's claimed we pushed. What other messages have we got? She wants to come spy master. You see, this is one of these things we're talking about with uh, this message here is King Edmund of England uh, has become, or this guy's become a new guardian of uh, some guy. The reason that we've now got that message is because um, we've asked to have messages about this bloke, so that's not one we'd probably give a shit about. Uh, in fact, that's probably another one you don't care about either, but you could actually go down and, um, you know, you can right-click here and say we want these messages moved out for that there, if you were so inclined. But anyway, at the moment we're playing, having a bit of a run-around, but now we're actually going to fight. Um... I've become a better soldier as a result of this. Become a tough soldier. Oh yeah, tough soldier. So, uh, that's all very nice. Uh, let's have a look at the battle. So he's getting a good pasting at the moment. Uh, including the actual Duke, I think, or the Earl. So, it's good. He hasn't got any uh, allies to call up uh, so hopefully this will be it we might not have enough troops to besiege him oh no we will have so that's the end of his troops uh, you know, the remaining ones have legged it the others are now sieging as you can tell so we've got our siege we've got more troops than his which means uh, we'll beat them um, and we also have this war score thing. I don't know if we discussed this before, but you know, you get a war score, uh, which is both the battles plus the occupation plus the fact that you you are controlling that county. And once it gets to a hundred, they will always give up. Sometimes, a lot of time with this, they'll give up beforehand. You can offer peace and see where you are, but the war is indecisive. Offer white peace, which is a draw, basically uh, it means we lose prestige uh, because we started it uh, again he's going to accept that because we've already just kicked kicked his ass and then surrender obviously he likes the way we're thinking uh, I don't know where he's going he's, he's off to Dublin bless him maybe he's on the piss he's probably gone for some he's probably gone to the Guinness factory to drown his sorrows can't blame him so he's now on his way we'll speed it up slightly because um, do we want to look at sieges do we care I don't think we do care. Uh, oh, so there you go. So now he's laying siege to Dublin, but unfortunately his maths isn't very good, and he doesn't realise that with 77 troops 
you can't lay siege to 244 defenders, and hence this siege has been abandoned and will not resume until the attacking force is larger than the defending one. Um, so therefore, he uh, he's going to just sit there now, drinking. I don't think he's sieging at all. I think he's drinking. I think he's just do having beer, basically. Uh, and he's just pretending. And people are asking him. They go, "What are you doing over there?" And he said, "I'm just besieging it. Just besieging it. Yep, yep. No, there's no Guinness here. Not having any drinks. Just besieging." And uh, hoping that no one notices the fact that obviously it's, he can't besiege with 77. So anyway, um, to be honest, all the English stag stag parties that have come over to Dublin, I mean, they'd, they'd, they'd be able to knock him out easily. Uh, ooh. His wife has got pregnant. I've not seen this one before. But I was away, wasn't I? Interesting. Oh, I've not seen that before. Does that mean his, his new wife's a bit of a slapper? Slapper. She's pregnant. Diligent, just, but a bit of a whore. Oh, see what happens when um, she gives birth. Uh, whether there's anything about him being a bastard or whatever. So we are going through at the moment. Um, sorry about the wittering nature of this. Usually I prepare these a little bit, but I've just I've just gone straight into recording, so we, I'm not really sure uh, <laughs> what stuff I was going to talk about. Um, there was a comment in one of the videos. Again, thanks for all the comments. It's appreciated. About what would you do after this? Uh, well, the idea is to try and unite the kingdom and become king. There are some interesting things about when you become a king, um, about some of the problems you can have, particularly with. Uh, having duke titles, uh, if you have more than two duke titles, your vassals start to go a bit mental on you. So there's some sort of tips as to how you should sort of arrange your affairs, given that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, there's 13 counties. If you want to aim to have the whole island, well, you're going to have to have, you can only have six of them at the moment. You probably have to be able to get an extra bonus being a king, so maybe you'll be able to have seven, but you'll still have to give uh, six seven of them away. So there's a whole thing we will talk about with how you'd organise those tiles. Uh, my son, is a, he just gave, he's turning out well, that's charitable, so we'll like that you can have the charitable trait. Um, the So yeah, so that's one of the things, but what would he do after that? Well, I think what we'll find is we will start having some battles, because these guys, I think, over here have a claim on Ulster, or someone has a claim on Ulster. So we'll probably, possibly, try and attack maybe up here. Uh, there's our siege, as you can see the, f the war score has now jumped hugely, which it would do because basically we've got rid of all of his troops virtually and we've besieged his biggest holding, so he's only got these two left, so he'll probably offer to surrender shortly. Um, but yeah, we will possibly try and get an alliance with England uh, so that we can then attack Scotland, possibly. Uh, or we might go further north, I don't know. We don't know these things yet, I haven't decided. Uh, we'll certainly have a crack at uh, the Isle of Man. Um, but that's kind of where we go. That's assuming we keep going with this. I think Ireland is an interesting one to start with, but then it does get a little bit kind of... You're, you're stuck with this big power over here, which is, could thwart you slightly. So uh, the last time I've played... The only other time I've actually played Ireland, which is using it to learn... Uh, it showed the brilliance of the game to me because I, I managed to get the entire island and become the king bar Ulster and Ulster was owned by Scotland they nipped in before me and eventually um eventually I went to war with Scotland I saved up all my money and I went to war with Scotland and I won Ulster hiring a load of mercenaries but of course I I bankrupted myself doing it, and it, it came down to right to the last minute, and I managed to get also. I united the whole of Ireland, but obviously the king over here spotted what I've been up to, the fact that I'd hired all these troops and immediately declared war. And within the space of a year, uh, he had a claim on three duchies, and I had to give them up. So, having united Ireland, he took that, I think he took that duchy, that duchy, and that duchy, so he took all of the middle bit. Um, and that's one of the things I love about this game. It's um, 
it can all be going really nicely but all you need is a couple of quick deaths because and a few of your vessels not liking you, the new people uh, <laughs> a daughter was born of my wife and the king of Georgia <laughs> that's fantastic I've not seen that before woe well, is me so he's going to get uh, a bad opinion of both of them I wonder if I can then can I do anything would I if I imprisoned her what would I have imprisoned her 83% see it's stupid isn't it will lower all your subjects opinion of you by minus 40 which is ridiculous she's just slept about I mean Christ my Henry VIII would be rolling in his grave if he couldn't do that, he would have had her head off. Quick as you could say, put your knickers back on. Anyway, uh, we've got up to 100% with this geezer. Now I'm going to see what happens here. But this this is where I might end up uh, looking a bit mental. I think he will become our vassal. But I've often seen this go the wrong way, where you press someone's claim and instead they just take the county themselves. But let's see what happens. I'm going. He he's, should be able to enforce demands. His answer is yes. I've lost the war. Uh, let's see what happens. This is me looking mental. Um, let's have a look. Right. Okay. Let's have a look at this guy. Right. He is. That is our county. He's now owning it. We have the. Um, ownership and if you pull back you can see the Duchy of Meath has now extended down to there that's our territory so by pressing his claim we have successfully uh, brought that into our realm effectively um, we've created another vassal this is product here. one child lacks a guardian that was our granddaughter we may as well we've only got two granddaughters let's see if we can educate her as well we do care about our heirs she might be an heir. Um, so yeah, we've got one, two, three, four now. Uh, if you also look at this vassal, he's the guy there. Um, he loves us because we pressed his claim. Sure, that's quite nice, isn't it? I wonder if we can abuse that in any way. Uh, no, probably not. Uh, in fact, if we revoke his title and keep it ourselves. He might actually agree, he will agree almost because he loves us, but we'll take a hit. So if you want to get it back, you can often then revoke it, and you'll see a whole load of stuff usually about there's a 5% chance he'll rebel, a 5% chance he'll rebel. In this case it looks like well, he won't, he'll just agree, and that's because he loves us, which is a bit mental really, because otherwise why do you let us do it? But anyway, um, you can see he's got these two vassals here, so we're going to get a little bit more money. Uh, actually we won't get any money out of him on this, but we do now have an extra holding. Uh, my granddaughter lives in the kitchen. She's a gr right butcher. We don't want gluttonous. Talk to fifty percent chance. Yeah, don't want it. Don't want a glutton. So let's just have a to finish off. Let's just look at what we've got up here. Uh, Earl Donchad. Uh, our vassal, him, now favours Domnall. Our son as heir to the Duchy of Meath. What's all that about? Well, we've set everything up to be elective, I think. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not it. Let's go look up. The Duchy of Meath uh, is set up to be an elective thing. So, therefore, who are the electors going to be? Well, it's going to be people who own, who are the next level down. and the, uh, Which is going to be him because he's, he's the only independent earl. So he at the moment is agreeing. Um, so that's all that was saying. Uh, so there's a few things there. He wants to get married and there's a couple there to do with our English guy that we're not so bothered about. So um, I'm kind of going to leave it there I think as to where we are. We've added another county. Um, I will try and plan this out a bit better if I carry on with another one if you want, if you want me to carry on with another one uh, and we'll see how far we can get uh, but until then I'll see you later